Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for our kind introduction. I'm Siegfried, and this is my colleague Stefan. And we are both from Germany, from a research institute called uh, Fraunhofer SIT. And uh, this, since this is our first time at Hack in the Box, uh, we thought it might be a cool idea to bring some local beer to, to hang out together after the, after the talk. So feel free to come on stage or, or meet us out there and, and grab a free beer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> cool. So, so let's start with this talk. Um, well, let's introduce us a little bit. Stefan, would you say a few words about yourself? Yeah, as Siegfried already mentioned, I'm Stefan. I'm a mobile researcher working also at the Fraunhofer Institute. And we together are members of a small student hacking group. And uh, as you can see, we're enjoying our spare time to teach students a bit of hacking. And here we want to present some of the results. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Siegfried, I'm a malware and vulnerability researcher at the Institute. Uh, my main research focuses on a static and dynamic code analysis, so combining these two guys together uh, in order to automatically identify vulnerabilities or to spot malicious parts in software. Um, yeah, but this talk is not only about us, as Stefan already mentioned, it's about our team. So we have, we founded a, a hacking team at our Institute. Uh, consisting of us and a couple of students, and we meet up in our spare time and hang out, have a beer and pizza, and then we look into interesting topics, and this passport manager was one of the topics we looked into. So the credits also don't, don't only go to us, it's go to this brilliant students I mentioned here, and um, yeah. Good, so let's start with the motivation. Um, I guess you all, well, you all, when you look at this slide, there are different icons, and you all, you probably have an account for this, um, for instance, for Apple, YouTube, uh, Skype, or whatever. And while well, we all are aware, we are in the security area, and it's hard to remember all these different passwords. So, well, it's usually not a good idea to have a single password for all of the accounts, and it's also not a good idea to have a password like blah, 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 one, blah, 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 two for the different accounts. So, well, you have, to have, um, you have to remember all these passwords. And there was an interesting study showing that uh, on average 90 different accounts, an average user has 90 different accounts and you have to remember all the 90 different accounts, uh, credentials, which is a hard problem. So, well, so the community came up with different approaches to solve this problem. I uh, well, on the top of this line, um, which goes a little bit away from the remembering the passwords to whatever public key crypto, um, there's other approaches like biometric authentication or picture authentication, where you remember a couple of pictures or some parts in the picture, and this lets you authenticate against their account. Well, but it turned out that but there's probably a lot more in the research area, but somehow we, all, we still stick to the problem of remembering these passwords. So this goes down to the, the line to the notebook, because I see in my personal environment always, especially for girls, they, they have a paper notebook and they're writing down their passwords in the paper notebook, like in whatever, in page 153, between two addresses they, they hide the password. Well, if you do this for 90 accounts and you have to reset, it's probably also not a good idea. And this brings me finally to, to our talk, the password manager. Well, it's, it's in general a cool idea. So you have a password manager where you put all your credentials and then you have a very long master password. And uh, once ed entering this password, master password, you can access all your sensitive um, credentials for it. And basically we talk about this. So we thought in the group, um, well, it might be a cool idea to look into password managers. So as a first step, we looked on the web and we checked out different vendors, what they think about password manager and how they promote their password manager. And we found one interesting vendor saying, yeah, um, so we use AES-256, a very strong encryption scheme. And while well, our password manager is basically banking level or military grade. So it's like, wow, cool, right? Um, let's give it a try and, and we say challenge accepted. Let's look into these guys if it's really so hard to break them. So, well, when we thought about this the first time, we, we thought about this picture. So, well, you, you have a street here, and you can have a barrier with your 2056 um, uh, encryption scheme, but there is always a left and a right to, to basically go around this thing. And, well, it turned out that this was most of the time the case in our vulnerabilities, what we found. 
So as a first step, um, well, since we focused on Android applications because mobile is cool and, and password managers, so we, we checked out a couple of password managers on the web. So we, we downloaded only the most downloaded ones because they are the most interesting ones. So for instance, um, we ordered by their download rate, a keeper, um, keep safe, one pass, and so on and so forth. So we collected nine of them. Um, so the first question which probably comes into your mind, why isn't there X or Y password? Why didn't you look into X or Y? We got this question quite often. And that, well, there is no special reason. So as I said, we are sitting together, we downloaded nine different password managers, and then we started looking into the nine in order to find vulnerabilities. And it turned out that we found a vulnerability in one of them, in, in each of them, at least one. And then at some time, well, we got bored and we said, well, let's, let's stop this project and continue to another project. So there is no special reason why we didn't look into another one. And I also want to state that this is not a complete pen test. So it might be the case there are more vulnerabilities in it. We only basically looked in it and we identified a few of them. Good, so let's talk a little bit about the core features or the features we identified by looking into these apps um, because they are interesting for the, for the talk. So while there is confidential um, password storage, well, with the master password, which I already explained, then there is this, this great feature of a secure synchronization, because if you have two devices or a PC in a device, and you would like to add whatever credentials in your whatever Android device, it should be synchronized with the PC, so you should also be able to log in into your PC. Um, Another thing, uh, uh, again, for user convenience, autofilling. So once you open, for instance, a Twitter application, it should be automatically and magically fills in your credentials because the user is lazy and he wants this. That was a great idea. Um, another thing is a custom browser. We saw a lot of applications that um, implement their own browser and they integrate it into their app uh, due to various implementation reasons, which we will explain later in the talk. And the last feature, which is basically, uh, well, they said, well, remembering this very long master password is probably hard for a user. Let's give them also a chance to remember a small pin. And this is basically similar to the master password. And we will also say a few words about this later. Good. So this slide shows an overview about the different interactions, um, which are important for the following talk. It's not complete, but it is enough for um, explaining our vulnerabilities. So this basically, this box here should um, well, symbolize the smartphone. And this box basically is the password manager app, which sits in its sandbox, in the Android sandbox. And what we found that most of the password manager apps store their master password in a file, which is in a sandbox, which is usually OK. Um, it's encrypted sometimes, sometimes not. We will mention this in a second. Uh, Database, so the credentials, what you, or the account credentials, what you enter, are also stored in a database in your sandbox. Um, this is, all, well, for convenient, I, I edited plain text, but usually they are encrypted, <laughs> sometimes not. Uh, anyway, and so there is another connection to uh, out of this sandbox. There's an account manager, which is special in Android, and they, some apps store the master password there. We will also explain this later on. Um, there's, a, what I already mentioned, there's a connection to the internet due to the synchronization um, problem, or the, due to the synchronization feature, sorry. And um, then, well, for instance, if you have a Twitter application, for instance, this app, there's also communication, obviously, between the password manager app and this app to automatically fill in the credentials. And last but not least, there's a PC which, is also, which can also communicate with the smartphone, which I'll explain in a second. Good, so no root scenario. What do I mean by this? All our attacks we considered are based on no rooted devices because if the device is rooted, a few things are broken because you then basically the sandbox model is broken and you can easily access the file and the user names and the password while you have to decrypt it. But most of the time the key is inside the app so it's not a big issue to decrypt the master password and so on. So all our attacks we mentioned are based on no rooted devices. Good, so let's talk a little bit about a few attack vectors which we'll explain. First attack vector is the scenario, so you basically found a device which has a password manager on it, and you're able to log into the device. And then is it possible once you plug it into your PC and connect to the um, device, is it possible 
to extract, for instance, the secured master password or the database files, which are, should be protected. First attack vector. Second one, what happens if I sit in between um, the, the, the pasta, master password and the internet? Is it possible to intercept or to get the, the credentials? Third one, well, if I somehow intercept the communication between these two apps, is it possible to get it? And last but not least, um, if, I, if I'm able to install an, an additional application on your device, is it possible that this additional application accesses or gets the master password and the credentials? So these are the four uh, different attack vectors what we looked into. Um, well, in this talk, we will not cover all of them um, because due to time restrictions. Um, but in total, we found 26 different vulnerabilities. And in the following, we will explain five in more detail. And later on, we give an overview what kind of vendors uh, we attacked or what kind of vendors, uh, what kind of issues we found in them. Okay, so let's start with the first scenario. So basically intercepting the communication between these two guys with the attack vector that you basically install an additional application, so is it possible to access it? Um, for this scenario, I will explain two different kinds of attacks. First is manual filling, so manually filling the credentials from the password manager app into your Twitter application, for instance, and automatically filling, so I will explain this in a second. Manually filling, so the scenario is like this, you have your password manager app on the left, and you have your Twitter application, for instance, and these are the credentials of the Twitter. What you do as a user, you do a, a right click, you do a copy on the password manager, and then you, for instance, click on the password, do a right click, and you paste it. So, it's general stuff. How does it work in Android? Well, you have a clipboard, and most of the password manager apps made use of the clipboard, so they store it on the, once you copy it, they store it on a clipboard, or save it on a clipboard, and then they read it from the clipboard. Well, when we look at this, we probably already see what's the problem. The problem is that in Android, every application can read from the clipboard without any permission. So this means you can write an application and once you copy something to a clipboard, you can read it and, and here we go. And that's basically the problem and in most of the um, apps we looked into, basically they had all the same problem. Well, I would say even worse because there are also some benign application that make use of the clipper functionality due to internal functionality of the app, which has nothing to do with this. So it might be the case that there are already applications out there that copy data from the clipboard and send it to the internet, and basically they steal your data um, without any um, purpose, basically. Second scenario, since this manual copying is not cool for the user, right? He wants to be more, it should be more convenient, and um, so let's automatically fill the credentials. So how does this work? So you basically open your Twitter application and it should be magically insert your credentials because you're too lazy to do a right click and a left click and, and again. But how does it work in Android? Because in Android, these two applications run in its own sandbox. So it's not usually not possible to whatever, put something in a field in another application or, or vice versa. So it's it usually not possible. So how do they do this? Well, the one possibility is a so-called accessibility service. Uh, which I'll explain in a second. So an accessibility service, so you have your password manager application and you add an additional service, a so-called accessibility service. And this service is integrated into your app. And for instance, once you open the Twitter application and you click on the password field, it automatically triggers a callback in the accessibility service saying, hey, now the user clicked on the password in this app and you can also fill or add some data into it. So why is this the case? Because I said it's usually not possible. So I have a quote um, from the Android developers saying, yeah, though this um, accessibility service is an application that provides a user interface enhancement to assist users with disabilities, now it makes more sense, right? And users who are driving, uh, taking care of young child and very loud party, <laughs> so I really like the last one here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it makes sense. So they come up with this accessibility service due to people with disabilities to make it easier for them to interact with the app. But when we read this, everything fits perfectly to the password manager apps, right? Now, obviously not. So they make basically abuse this thing and make use of it. But the big question is now, so we now know that it's possible to identify um, fields in another application, but how do you know automatically that these credentials, for instance, should be passed into the Twitter application? So Twitter, for instance, has com.twitter.android as a package name, a unique identification of the app. 
So how do you do this? Uh, well, they saw some application, password management money. It might be a cool idea. Let's look into this a little bit. Um, when you add a new password uh, credentials, where you add the name and you add the website, twitter.com, username and password, and there is the Twitter application which starts with com.twitter.android, right? So they thought, mm, cool, right? So there is a connection between this URL and the package name. So let's make use of this. So what they did is, they, well, they pa parse basically at twitter.com, then they reverse it to twitter.com, then they check it if it matches with com.twitter, oh, with com.twitter, all right, that's okay, with com.twitter, and then it checks if, there, if the current activity has a, a text password field in it, and if this is the case, it automatically inchecks the credentials. So it looks good, right, but what happens if uh, if they only check for the prefix, so they only check for com.twitter and not an equals. So this means I can come up with an application, for instance, com.twitter.twitterleaks, com.twitter.hackingabox, whatever. I run an application with a password field in it, I open it, and it magically inserts the credentials of Twitter. And for this, we also have a demo, a short demo. Oh yeah, demo time. <laughs> Okay, so, so this is the demo. Um, well, there's the, the, smart, the device, uh, I run it now. So now we open this password manager application. We enter our super secure master password, obviously, to unlock our safe. Uh, there is our Twitter credentials, um, well, random credentials, you can use them, they don't work. And now we see that uh, we will add this uh, super f cool feature of automatically filling the credentials. For this, we have to register the accessibility service. Uh, it's in the settings. This activate autofill, you see it here. Um, well, it adds the master password. And now it says, yeah, you need to register the accessibility service. Now we are basically in Android. In Android, you have to explicitly register this guy, the accessibility service, which is a good thing. Um, now you're enabling the accessibility service and now Android is saying, hey, hey, dude, are you sure? Because Avast wants to observe your actions and retrieve your window content. And the user says, yeah, obviously, yes, because I would like to have this autofill feature. And he clicks on OK. And then it says, well, we go back. And it says, yeah, now you're good and <laughs> everything works perfect. So that's it, and what we do as a next step, we open our application, uh, because this is now really fast, so we will click on um, this, uh, or this application, which is our fake com.twitter.twitterleaks application, and what we see here, when we click on it, it immediately access, uh, inserts the credentials. So this means it accesses the, the username, the password, and just that you see it, we basically, this is a dot notation, so we added the, um, the real password here. So this shows basically you can come up with an application and it will automatically insert it. We can, this is only for demo purpose, we also wrote an application which is completely transparent, so you don't see that you enter, anything is entered, it basically runs in the background and we can steal the credentials from you, just if you click on an application, it, shows the credentials, then you go back, and then you whatever, open a game or whatever. So we show that, this shows that it's possible. Now let's switch. Good, and I'll, now we'll hand over to Stefan, who will continue with um, the rest of our attacks. Okay. Yeah. Siegfried already introduced our um, attacker models. Um, the next attack I want to show is um, so-called evil maid attack. Just assume you lost your device or someone found it or um, steals your device and is able to bypass your screen lock, some swipe pattern, whatever, and he can connect your device to the PC. Is it, pos is it possible to read out somehow the, the protected password database, password container, or just get the master password? And for this scenario, um, I first introduce some Android function um, I don't know, is everybody aware of the Android debug bridge? So I don't have to go in detail with the debug bridge. Oh, that's great. Okay, everybody knows also, um, if I have access to the device, I can enable this developer function. And the cool thing is, um, Android debug also allows the so-called uh, backup function. 
This means if the application has the backup feature enabled, I can make a backup of the, ta of the target package. And the backup is considering the whole um, private data folder. So let's say everything what is in the sandbox is be, uh, or can be backed up when this uh, backup flag is enabled. After, after, oh, sorry. after the backup, there are tools just to transform the backup into an archive. We can extract it. And there we, for instance, found an XML file containing the master password or master secret in plain text. That was the whole protection. And the idea is, this, this app will not really require any backup flag because it has a backend synchronization. They do their own backups. But this is one very easy way to bypass the sandbox. And as you can see, the master password is there in, in plain text. Just make a cat and you have full access to the encrypted um, password container. Uh, the next attack scenario is considering um, um, more on the app side, so I can, for instance, trick the user to install a malicious app, or I, as a, uh, um, I, when I, when I steal the phone, can install a malicious app or whatever. So the idea is just to bring an app on the on the target device. And before I explain the attack in detail, I want to make a short uh, side note. I think everybody knows um, the, the the browser problem here. Um, on Android, we have a lot of different uh, browser types, and as I already mentioned, or Secret explained, we have our password manager app. And now the idea of the password manager is somehow to also enable this auto login feature for the for the browsers. So, how can we fill the the login or the password post form automatically in different browsers? The best solution would be when we have. Uh, each browser provides some, some common API which we can use to inject our content. But the problem is there is no such API. So the, the developer of such uh, password manager apps come out with a new idea. What about if we build our own browser? So here we see we have our password manager app and now they build their own browser. The problem is that the own browser is part of the application. So this means the, the browser is running in the same process as the application and is also part of the same sandbox. The advantage now is because the, the browser is part of the application, the password manager completely can control this browser. So you can see the autofill is for instance working, but the question is now, can we abuse this browser somehow to, to bypass the sandboxing and access the local app folder to get, for instance, stored credentials, master password, and whatever. So at first, um, um, a few details about the browser. How are they designed? As I already mentioned, they are part of the app, so they are running in the same process, so they are part of the sandbox. The most browsers use the WebView API, and a special feature of the WebView API is it supports also file URIs. You have to disable or enable them. What happens now if the file URI support is enabled? Um, you will see it here. Imagine this is our browser bar. And now we enter some URL. We know the package name. We, um, we know the data folder, the package folder. We know also some, some XML file name of the application because we could reverse engineer or analyze it. And when we enter this in the browser, the app listens all the sandbox content. Here you see a more sophisticated XML file. For instance, the XML values and attributes are obfuscated just by an MD5. And what you can see here is our uh, master password or our PIN. It's here base 64 encrypted, so we cannot read it, but it's also really encrypted with an additional key. The question is now, for decrypting the master password, we need the key. And where can we get this key? This is very easy. We just look into the code because the key is hard coded in the application. This one here is a more sophisticated. They have obfuscated the key by splitting it up in two parts, but we found different other password managers who had just a complete string which they use as encryption key. So, as you saw, we get access to the web view so we could read out the stored master password, use the encryption key, the algorithm, and decrypt the master password. So another attack, as Secret also mentioned, now we get access to the master password files or database. But there's also, 
we found one application who thought, okay, we make it a more bit uh, sophisticated, we put it in the account manager. What is the account manager? The account manager is some, some centralized class provided by um, Android. Um, it's based on a simple SQL Lite database and it's restricted with system permission. This means no application can access this database directly. For, for writing, reading, or um, uh, interacting with this database, Google especially uh, um, offers the, um, a special API, and each app can use this API. Despite of the using, there's still a, a, a separation because it cannot be that uh, application A can read out something from application B. Here is also uh, a short um, citation from the um, Google developer website which really says you shouldn't pass the user actual password to the account manager, you just should use some, some special token. So to sum this up, don't store your master password or your credentials in the account manager. Guess what happens? I'll show a short demo. Then after that I will um, explain the demo in details because I think there will be then a few, um, few questions. Okay, so you see again our smartphone. At first we start the application. I logged in with my secure master password. So, as you could see, the password was very complex and hard to remember. I activate some, some convenient option. It's called the pin lock code. So I can set a pin lock, so I don't have to remember to this complex password. And they also offer me to, to somehow store the master password to get uh, access again when something happens. So the remember function here in the corner is activated. So when I start now the application, you will see my, my new pin is, is working. One, two, three, four. So I can also use the pin instead of the master password. Everything is fine. Okay, now you see in this corner a short script which is accessing this um, central um, database I already mentioned. Uh, here, okay, a few explanations. As, as I mentioned, the ex attack is working without root. Now you, you think I'm cheating because you need root access to this, but this root access is just for you to show or to get access to this database that you see, okay, um, where is it? Ah, here, our application stores somehow encrypted and encoded the, the database, uh, the, the master password in the database. So when you now continue, I install my attacker app. And the attack is based on a so-called residue attack. So after installing the application, you see this is just for, for demo purpose. And with this application, I can also re register an account where I store my information in the account manager. You see here, I will explain it in a few minutes, here suddenly happens some, some exception. This is the output of an exception, UID, something went wrong. Now when we continue, what I'm doing now, I'm uninstalling our target application. So you saw this dash line, I was configuring, setting my master password, everything, and now I'm uninstalling it. What now I can do, I click on extract the password. As you can see here, my application here shows now the same as on the left side. And when I click on decrypt, 
I could decrypt it. The question is now, okay, I have extracted it somehow, why could I also decrypt it? The same solution as before, password is uh, the, the uh, key, the encryption key is part of the application. Okay, what's now the secret behind this attack? So here again you see the Android system, our account manager API, our account database. So now when we install an application and the application wants to store some information in this database, it needs a so-called account type. You can imagine this account type of some kind of primary key for the database. So the data is stored in the database, also Android, um, um, stores the UID so it knows, okay, for this UID and this um, kind of primary key, this stored information are associated. Now we see our attacker app. Our attacker app defines the same account type as our target application. When you want to install it, you saw there is a collusion. This was the, the exception you saw in the demo because the UID Android recognize, okay, the UID is not matching, it's already blocked, you, you cannot access this information. But what happens now if we uninstall the dash line? The Android system says, okay, I remove it, but give me a moment, uh, there's someone who still is using this uh, primary key. They do not check the UID, they just check the, the primary key and say, okay, oh, I cannot remove this information because there's still some application which has registered this primary key. And now we just simply can access and read out this information from the system database. And this is completely working without um, any root access or something. Um, here you saw just uh, the, the code excerpt, it's just a few lines. You saw you build a new instance of the account, some, some email address. This is the um, account type or mentioned, this is primary key, catch the exception. And this is just the reading out, you identify your account again by the account type and get all your information. So just a few lines of code. I was testing this code uh, or this exploit on uh, Android version 6 or Android M. I don't know if it's already fixed on Android 7, but I had no newer device. Um, so now this were all demos. I just wanted to list a few further, um, let's say, fails or, or critical weaknesses we found in, in different password managers. The first one is just uh, custom crypto. I don't know, the developer thought AES is not so good, I'm more sophisticated, I built my own crypto. It was based on just some uh, um, XOR or um, character flipping, so you can imagine broken by design. Some used AES, but in ECB mode. And the problem is if you use it for database, use the ECB mode, imagine you store your passwords and some users have for two or three services the, the same password. This means with the ESB mode, each password is encrypted the same way. If now an attacker somehow gets or breaks one password, he can also derive the other passwords from, from the other services. Uh, also a very funny thing is the, the self-implemented browsers I show you do not handle or consider, consider subdomains. This means if you store credentials, for instance, for the page uh, mypage.wordpress.com, you can store the credentials. But then if you go to phishing.wordpress.com, he automatically also fills the credential in such a post form because he cannot determine or resolve the subdomains. Um, the Browsers also had data leakage problems, enforced HTTP traffic, or use Google search just in plain text. And one, one um, application also, we did not show it in detail, but they also did not um, rely on um, HTTPS or TLS. They implemented their own um, crypto transport protocol, and as the custom crypto, such this protocol was also uh, broken by design. And could be possible just to uh, man in the middle and if drop the protocol and sniff the complete um, pass, uh, password um, container synchronization to the back end. Uh, just a short slide with a few recommendations and improvements to the password developers. Android provides a key store. 
In the newer version, it's also combined with the um, hardware um, system or, or TPM model. So if you want to store credentials, the secret master password, why ever, put it in the key store. There it's better, but the, the um, overall um, recommendation is don't store the master password. When you do crypto, don't put any string in the application. You do some key stretching or key derivation. The Android API provides the PBKDF2 function. It's not the fastest, but for instance, Facebook also offers a good crypto library. It's called Conceal. They also offer PBKDF2. It's around, I think, 1,000 times faster and also uses a more secure um, hash algorithm than the Android API, but uh, do key stretching. Avoid hard-coded keys. I, don't, I think I don't have to say any more. And when you're using AES, for instance, database encryption or file encryption, use um, a good crypto mode like CBC and uh, GCM. And do not abuse the account manager. So here you see now uh, a list or an overview of all findings. As you see, this was the, the table from the beginning, the different um, password managers. Here again, the different um, weaknesses and vulnerability we found. The first one was the, the master pin. So in this line, in all these apps with Across, we were able to somehow get and decrypt the stored master password. These apps had hard-coded keys. There we were able to somehow bypass the sandbox without any root. These are were different side channel attacks like uh, clipboard sniffing or some other derivation. Here, these apps had self-implemented browser, which completely ignored subdomains, why ever. This browser had data leakage problem. One application just encrypted the password uh, database only partially, so there was no full encryption. And this one was the, the broken synchronization where the developer thought, okay, we can do it better than TLS. You see, we have a lot of um, crosses. We did not achieve a full bingo, but um, it was enough. All findings, advisories in detail, you can find here under this link when we put all the security advisories which we sent to the uh, manufacturer on our website. Um, yeah, and we go to the end because the, the beer is getting warm. A short uh, summary. So we showed several ways or uh, techniques to attack the application without any roots. A few of them, or the most of them, were just possible because the uh, application provides some convenience function, and this, this convenience or comfort function just weakens or, or destroys the complete um, security concept. And yeah, as I already mentioned, all findings were reported under responsible disclosure, and I think nearly all uh, except one are already fixed. So can only say thank you for your attention. If you have any question, feel free to ask. If you are thirsty, take some beer. <laughs> thank you very much. Well done for having the fastest applause of all the talks so far <laughs> by just offering free beer. <laughs> <laughs> any questions from the floor before we get to the beer? Oh, wow, I'm surprised. Yes, there is one. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Uh, have you encountered any uh, password manager that tries to protect the data even despite root attacks? Because there are countermeasures that can do it. Sorry, I didn't, did you understand it? Only partially. Uh, only partially the, the you, you were saying that they implemented some ways to circumvent our attacks? No, no, no. Have but you found any password manager that tries to protect its data even in the presence of a root access? Uh, even, yeah, we, we found, uh, not really protect, but there were for instance, LastPass informs the user, he's made a small window and says, um, uh, you, we, we recognize your device is rooted, please don't store the password. But then you say, okay, I, despite of this, I want to store it, you store it, but there's no really, um, let's say, active uh, protection against rooting or, for instance, do not start the application or preventing, the pro uh, preventing password storing or whatever. Some, some recognize it, but they, um, it's then a user decision how to, to handle the warning. And how good was the obfuscation, if there was any, on those products? Um, there were no really obfuscation. It was just uh, the, the ProGuard shrinking 
uh, shortening the name, but if you, for instance, whatever Dex card or some really hardening framework, there was no, no obfuscation. This was yeah. very easy. Um, some, for instance, the, the demo, which stored the, 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 I showed in the demo video, the dash line, they had the encryption part in, in native, but mm -hmm. this is also just security by obscurity. So you can also reverse the, the native part. In this case, I have to say I was a bit too lazy. I just put the library in the application and used the static uh, key. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Feel free to enjoy the Oh, wait. Uh, which password measure you recommend to use <laughs> is best from your analysis? I, to be honest, I have a small self-written one where I can enter the password based on an XML file. It's encrypted and decrypted. No, no autofilling, nothing, no password remembering. Just use a bit of uh, AES encryption and XML file. But if you, for instance, the password manager we showed, when you disable all this convenience feature and don't store the master password, they, they should be secure. Mm. Use it just as a container. Don't use all this uh, autofilling, shifting, storing, remembering, shortening features. Uh, then, then it should be okay. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Well, thank you very much, Secret okay. and thank Stefan. You. Thank you.